Hello everyone, my name is Anton Pelcher. I'm an engineer and I have been building fish farms for more than 10 years. Today we're talking to you about the 7 steps to start your own fish farm. Today we're going to discuss what you need to do step by step to get your farm up and running. And we're going to go over the preparation of the facility in detail. How you need to prepare the building in order to install RAS equipment, so that everything can work well. So watch the video to the end. By the way, at the end you still get a special bonus. You will find out what this bonus is at the end. So let's go! So the first step on the way to your own fish farm is, of course, to figure everything out and calculate. And we start with economics. Well, in order to go into this business, it's important to understand in general what are you going there for and how much you need to spend, that is, costs, profits, payback period and so on. That's why everything starts, of course, with an estimate, with a business plan. If you are interested in learning more about this, go ahead and watch the relevant videos on my channel, and you are sure to find answers to all the questions that interest you are concerned about. The second step is the arrangement of equipment. That is, let's imagine, you have estimated that you would like to grow 10 tons of sturgeons. What to do next? Well, then you need at least to understand how to arrange all rest equipment, where to do it, and understand how you prepare the building. So, at a minimum, you need to calculate everything and arrange the equipment, what it will be and where it will be located, where the fish tanks will be placed and of what sizes. It's impossible to move forward without this, and ideally the design, of course. That is, to make the drawings, calculations, it's certainly ideal. Next step. When you know what to do, how and where to do, it means building preparation. You need to prepare your building for the installation of equipment. By the way, it's better to do all in parallel, to prepare the building and to order equipment. No matter how you approach it, it really can and has to be done in parallel. How do you prepare the building? Let's consider that step by step. The first issue is the building. What are the requirements for it? First are the insulation materials. They must not absorb moisture. Since this production is connected with water, you cannot use mineral wool, because it will absorb water. Secondly, non-toxic materials should be used. That is, if you have a ceiling made of galvanized steel and water starts dripping from, then the zinc is very harmful to fish, and it's undesirable for that to happen. There can also be condensation on the ceiling and on the walls, so use non-toxic materials. Don't use copper, zinc, don't paint with toxic paints, and everything will be fine. Next, use a vapor-proof barrier. That is, if you have a sandwich of several layers, use a vapor barrier in order to steam, which will definitely be present at this production, did not penetrate further into the insulation, and did not reduce its insulation properties, thermal insulation. Well, probably the last of the requirements for the building, walls, ceiling, is to use washable materials. That is, those materials that can be easily washed, because something can still get on the walls, and they periodically need to be washed. What's the easiest option? The easiest option is either just to paint the walls with regular water-based emulsion, or, for example, PVC panels, because they are easily cleaned. The only thing I don't like about them is that they fade. Other than that, it's a great material. Let's move further. What are the requirements to the floors? Since you have equipment, it's heavy, the load on the floors can be up to 2 tons per square meter, so it's not advisable to use the second, third, fourth and other floors, because most likely the floors won't withstand such a load. It's desirable to locate the farm on the first floor, and this way it's much more convenient to move, to transfer the fish, so it should be a floor that we can withstand this load, not some flimsy one. It's desirable that it's a concrete slab, 15-20 cm thick, with double reinforcement. Then it will withstand 100%. It must be monolith. Also, be sure to provide slopes and drains, because water will get on the floor. Water will either stay in puddles, or it will be rolled down the slopes, even small ones, and it will go into the gangways. Basically, you need a flat floor, except for these drains, and the drains are connected to the sewage system. And the last requirement to the floors is coating. It's not a requirement, but rather a recommendation. 
You can, of course, just work on bare, damp concrete. But this is not very pleasant, not very hygienic. It's difficult to wash. In general, it's better to cover the floors with some kind of polymer composition, or at least just polish. The next issue is fish farming blocks. What do we need to take into consideration inside the building? One or two rooms are enough for a small farm. You generally need to provide for a person who will watch, it can be you or someone else. Also, you need to hang blowers, put an oxygen concentrator and somewhere to store the feed. That's pretty much it. And the main room for the tanks and rice equipment. If we're talking about an industrial farm, there are a number of requirements to the farm blocks and rooms. These are the operator's room bathroom, dressing room, laboratory, boiler room, electrical switchboard, generator room, ventilation chamber, and so on. Next to the windows. Do you need light at all or not? At rice farms, only artificial lights are used. Sunlight is not needed there. Why? Because it provokes water blooming. So remove all the windows, hang the curtains, bring them up. Leave the windows in some auxiliary rooms. The light from them will not disturb. On the contrary, it will be good. And inside fish farming blocks, use artificial lighting only. As a rule, two lines of lights are made. One line is on the sides. Dimmed light is for the time when the operator is absent, and the other line procuring bright light. This is to work with the fish, when the fish is fed, or when the staff works with res equipment. These are standard requirements. In order to work to bring res equipment in and out, you need to provide for certain openings. A lot of novice farmers are literally trapped with this issue. Because if you have standard door openings, it's impossible to bring the equipment in. You have to disassemble it, cut it, weld it on the spot, and so on. So think about it. Either you clearly understand beforehand that you weld everything inside, all the tanks by filters, reservoirs, or you prepare a large gate, which would allow you to bring in ready-made equipment, and this equipment is delivered to your farm completely welded and assembled. How high are the ceilings in your building? The minimum ceiling height I would recommend is 2.5 meters, but in fact, it very much depends on the technology. Depending on how the technology is implemented, ceilings can be as high as 4 or sometimes even 5 meters, especially at large-scale farms. So be careful. First, figure out how you are going to arrange the equipment, and then consider the height of the ceilings, unless you have an existing building where you can't change anything. Heating and ventilation At a rest farm, it's required to maintain the same temperature all year round, depending on the type of fish. 16-17 degrees for trout, 22-24 degrees for sturgeon, 26-28 degrees for African catfish, the same for crayfish and shrimp. So, in order to maintain this temperature all year round, you need first of all a heating system, which will include a boiler room. Who wants to know more about heating sources, follow the link and I'll show you in detail what heating sources exist. You will need either a system of radiators or heat fans, that is, something that would heat the air in your fish farming block. Because if the water in the tank is warm and the air is cold, you will have very high evaporation and it will quickly deteriorate, ruin all the equipment and your building in general. So be sure to heat both the air and the water. What will you need to heat water? Heat exchangers, and that's pretty much. You heat the air, you heat the water. Well, and ideally also heat makeup water, because the water supplied from the borehole is cold, it may also need to be heated. So at least two levels of heating, at most three levels. Ventilation. What do we need in terms of ventilation? To remove carbon dioxide and fish release it when breathing, and it's released into the air. And also, it's important to provide pure oxygen supply to the room. Well, it's elementary and natural even for people. It also reduces the level of humidity, and this is necessary for the equipment long-time operation. So you need to ensure proper ventilation. At a small farm, this can be natural ventilation. You open a window or a door, and that's it. And a large-scale industrial farm should be equipped with supply exhaust ventilation. It must work properly and provide at least two air exchanges of the entire room per hour. This is all about ventilation for the moment. Now let's proceed to water supply. First, water source. What can it be? The first one is municipal water supply, but it's not the best option. You have to pay for the water, treat it from chlorine and so on, and still it can be cut off. 
The second is a borehole. This is usually the best option, but sometimes it can be contaminated. But in fact, 70% of farm supply make up water from a borehole. And the third. This is an open water source, a river or lake. It also has its own peculiarities, because this water needs to be very seriously treated before being supplied to the farm. Plus, if we consider more or less industrial volumes, you need to go through a whole bunch of approvals in order to be able to take water from an open water body. What is the most important about a water source? Well, first of all, it must provide you water of a sufficiently good quality. If it does not, then water needs to be treated at the inlet, not in RAS, but a separate water treatment at the inlet to the farm. And secondly, correct amount of makeup water must be supplied. And what is it? The right amount. Despite the fact that the daily recharge is only 10-20% of the total rest volume, taking into account the emergency costs, I would recommend to count on half of the volume of all tanks per day. That is, your water source should fill your entire rest system in no more than two days. This is the quantity requirement. At a small farm, it's a relevantly small amount. At a large farm, it's correspondingly a large amount of makeup water. What is needed in terms of energy supply? First, you need a main source of power supply. This is usually the municipal electricity supply. If it's a small farm, 220 volts are sufficient. If it's a large industrial farm, it's 380 volts. Power is highly dependent on the farm size, from 2-3 kilowatts at a small farm or even a megawatt at some larger mega farms. And backup power supply. What is a backup power supply? It's an elementary gasoline or diesel generator, and with an automatic start that would turn on in case the main source power supply is cut. That's why it's imperative to have a backup power supply. Wastewater this is the issue that is very often overlooked or neglected, and it's very important. Imagine, for example, you supply 20 cubic meters of water per day to your farm. It's passed through the filters and the same amount. The same 20 cubic meters are discharged, but that's already dirty water from filter flushing. So what to do with this water? Is it really going to be drained? And what is 20 cubic meters? This is the volume of water for about 100 people who live, for example, in an apartment building. Around 100 people use 20 cubic meters per day. So, if you have a central sewage system, the issue is resolved. If you don't have it, you need to solve two problems. First, it's to clean the water, because you cannot just dump it, despite the fact that there is in fact the remains of feed, feces, and there are no chemical elements contained in it. And the second is to dump it somewhere. 20 cubic meters discharged on the ground probably won't just dissolve. There has to be a ravine, a lake, a pond. In general, if you are interested in this topic, be sure to watch the relevant videos on my channel. Well, that's pretty much it. You've prepared the building. What do we do next? Next is the stage of equipment production. As a rule, it goes in parallel with building preparation and the equipment is delivered exactly when the building is ready. Be sure to pay attention to what equipment should be made in advance and what can be assembled on the spot because the width of transport vehicles may not allow to move such equipment as fish tanks by filters. They may require inside assembly. The next point is installation. This equipment still needs to be assembled. Because it's delivered, disassembled. It's not possible to move the RAS system already assembled. So, you first need to install all the tanks. The second step is to install all the equipment. Tie this whole system with the piping, drainage system, air, oxygen supply and so on. Next, electrical connection of all equipment to a special control panel. Then fill in the system. See if there are no leaks, no problems. And at the end, start the biofilter. The biofilter also needs to be run and tested for a certain period of time. A biofilm will be formed there as well as bacteria that will treat the water from ammonia. And probably the last, seventh step is stocking. When the system is already installed, the biofilter is running, you can stock with the fry. But keep in mind, you have to agree with the supply of fry in advance, not catch up with it at the last moment. Because the fry you need may simply not be available at the last moment, or it may cost too much, or the supplier may be too far away. So, make an agreement with the supplier of the fry when you start to prepare your building for rest system installation. This was 7 steps on how to properly start your own small fish farm. Today we discussed how to properly prepare the building. By the way, I have a special bonus for you. 
following the link in the description. You can download a bonus file which I promised you. So, if you are interested in diving deeper into this topic, download and use it. This is Anton Pelcher and my channel on how to grow fish and make good money from it. Bye!